Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Hi, good morning. It is Tuesday, November 29th. Thanks for joining us. Yes, thank you for joining us. Right off the bat, we want to hit you with a hot take on a couple of things today. We've been talking about Black Friday and Cyber Monday. It's also Giving Tuesday today, and a lot of people have spent so much time the last couple of days kind of enjoying, right. you know, the, the, the food and the presents and, you know, getting gifts lined up for the mm -hmm. holidays. It's maybe time today think for another minute about others. Right, so other organizations, you might see those emails coming up, you know, you know, sometime today, so remember that as well. Also, no shave update. Well, real quick, go to givingtuesday.org. That's mm -hmm. the website to go to find all those. No shave, the leaderboard is red hot this morning. It's been interesting. It's been going back and forth. We will we'll tell you, Mike and Justin. Yeah, it's Justin's a big here. duel between Mike and Justin. <laughs> yeah, so that's coming up. All eyes on World Cup today, that big match between USA and Iran. World Cup today, one o'clock on Fox. A lot happening off the uh, pitch that you may not have heard about yet, but a lot. Uh, it's very become very geopolitical. Yes, very political. yes. And I, I wonder if a lot of people are maybe not going to be at work to watch this. Who match. knows? But mm -hmm. it's going to be a busy afternoon for Team USA. They need yes. to win, or they will go home. Yes. Also, don't forget today is called Travel Tuesday as well. Yeah, that's right. Some airfares to Europe and the Caribbean are on the steel today. But first, let's go ahead and check in with Justin to see if we're still going to have this humid weather for the rest of the day. Mm -hmm. It's still going to be humid most of the day, but we'll lose some of these clouds you see out there. The visibilities will start to improve. We had fog and drizzle most of the night. And uh, it's been kind of just uh, kind of a damp start to the day. Uh, but we'll see visibilities, as I mentioned, improve and uh, things will get a little bit better. There's a look at the current visibilities here around San Antonio. We're at five miles. That's really not bad. New Braunfels, seeking Kerrville, all looking pretty good. So the fog is actually beginning to lift a little bit. And I'll show you the visibility around the rest of the area. Uh, we're seeing some lower numbers down towards Castroville, Hondo, Stinson. So the southern half of Bear County, maybe the fog's a little thicker, but that's still not going to be uh, causing big issues, I don't think, on the roadways. Carrizo Springs, the one area where we are seeing close to zero visibility at this hour. Here's what we have to look forward to. It is forecast to be in the 80s today. Skies will clear, sun comes out, still kind of humid, temperatures up around 80 or so. And then tomorrow morning, front comes through overnight. We'll start off tomorrow in the 40s. Jacket weather, windy, wind chills potentially in the 30s. So that is the change uh, that heads our way later tonight. We're going to talk much more about this cold front, get you prepared for it coming up in just a few minutes. But let's get over to Stephen now with a look at your chat. Hey, thank you, Justin. All right, let's get a look there around town. The roads look like they've dried out a bit. Uh, we did have some damp roads out there earlier in the morning. Uh, it really wasn't causing an issue for drivers, but notice that things have dwindled down, so some good news to report there, but we still have a few problem spots to mention. Now, a crash has been reported here along I-10 westbound near Vance Jackson Road. If you are driving west, maybe toward Bernie, and you have to travel through there, you'll likely see that crash, so just watch out for crews. But as we give you a wide look at the map, uh, just a few slowdowns remain. You can see that there along I-10. 35 as you're coming in from Live Oak near 1604 on the northeast side. And of course, that usual trouble spot up there on the northwest side of 1604 uh, I-10 near Whole Lotus. So always expect to see those slowdowns because of construction. But we give you one last look here at Transguide. 410 at McCullough, a little bit busier out there, but again, things have quieted down for the most part. Of course, we'll keep a close eye on things, give you those updates as we need to right here on GMSA at 9. Guys. Thank you. Top stories we're following this morning. Capital murder trial of a Border Patrol agent. Testimony continued this morning. You're looking at live images from the courtroom right now where a video is being played. Testifying a state trooper who found Juan David Ortiz when they were looking to arrest him. Ortiz is accused of killing four sex workers and Eric Hernandez is covering this trial. We will be live streaming it from beginning to end. And again, you can watch it on KSET.com, KSET Plus and our YouTube page. We're going to have continued coverage on our other newscasts as well. An early morning wake up call for residents at a north side apartment complex after a fire set off alarms. It happened at the Oak Hills Place Apartments on Northwest Military Highway near Braysview just before 3 a.m. Firefighters say it started in an upstairs unit where a family of three were living. They were able to get out safely after the smoke detectors went off. The fire also spread to an upstairs loft and an attic of that building. Now, in total, 10 people will need somewhere else to stay, but no one was hurt. The power was also shut off to the entire complex. The cause of the fire is still unclear. 
The boil water noticed in Houston has been lifted. Officials made the announcement just before 7 this morning. The Texas Commission on Environmental Quality gave the OK after a series of samples determined it was safe for public use once again. This comes Tuesday, two days after officials say the pressure from the city's main water system dropped below TCEQ's required minimum level during a power outage at a water purification plant on Sunday morning. The Electric Reliability Council of Texas, or ERCOT, will be talking about the state's power grid this afternoon. The CEO of ERCOT, along with the chairman of the Public Utility Commission of Texas, are expected to update us on the grid reliability and readiness for the upcoming winter season and what step leaders are taking to make sure that we Texans don't lose power again like we did back in February of 2021. That meeting is happening today at 1 o'clock in Austin. And let's look at today's 9 at 9. The biggest active volcano on Earth continues to erupt on Hawaii's biggest island. Scientists say the lava is flowing into the northeast rift zone and will likely stop before reaching the large town below. Mauna Loa hasn't erupted in almost 40 years. Emergency services and the National Guard are on standby and the state health department is monitoring air quality. Months after a Connecticut man was left paralyzed in police custody, five officers have now been arrested and charged. The incident was caught on camera and the video is disturbing. The officers are on paid administrative leave and are due in court next week. The man arrested was originally charged with unlawful possession of a firearm, but all charges against him have now been dropped. President Biden is stepping back into the ongoing rail labor negotiations, calling on Congress to intervene and block a strike that could overwhelm our economy. So far, four of the 12 railroad unions rejected a recent agreement with rail operators. The main sticking point has been the amount of sick leave for rail workers. If a deal isn't reached or forced by Congress, a strike could begin after December 9th. The Senate is expected to take a final vote on marriage equality today after striking an agreement to expedite passage on the floor. The bill codifies the right to same sex and interracial marriage. It is largely expected to pass the Senate. The legislation still needs to go back to the House for final passage, but is expected to pass and head to the president's desk. Today's U.S. World Cup game is not only a must win, it's also being clouded by politics. Iranian state media has called for the U.S. team to be kicked out of the tournament after the U.S. Soccer Federation removed the Islamic Republic emblem from Iran's flag in this social media post. A move to show support for protesters in Iran. Anti-government protests have been spreading for weeks, stemming from the in-custody death of a woman for not wearing her headscarf properly. So far, this has been the worst flu season in more than a decade, and it continues to intensify. 33 states and counting are experiencing high or very high respiratory virus activity, and seasonal flu activity is still elevated across the country. Flu and RSV have hit harder and earlier than usual this year. Stock market slid down through the day yesterday, with the Dow hitting the closing bell off nearly 500 points, down 1.4%. The Nasdaq dropped 1.6 and the S&P lost 1.5%. The sell-off continued when the Federal Reserve signaled interest rates could stay higher for longer to fight inflation. This is the season of giving and today is known as Giving Tuesday. It's a day that encourages people to donate to charity. It's also a great opportunity for nonprofit organizations to raise funds. But you don't have to limit yourself to just giving money. You can also donate items or your time. The Tuesday after Thanksgiving is also starting to be known as Travel Tuesday because of the great deals you can score. Flight and hotel data proves travel providers tend to drop 50% more deals on Travel Tuesday than the average day. The best deals right now are for international flights. And that's today's 9 at 9. Yeah, grab those deals now. Airfare is not going down anytime soon. Well, in your morning headlines, more controversy surrounding that luxury clothing company. And Deshaun Watson is ready to get back on the football field. Plus, the IRS has a warning for you and a discovery of a smaller dinosaur. David Sears is here to tell us all about it. Can a dinosaur be smaller? Some, I guess. <laughs> they, they could be. So is it really a dinosaur?
Hmm. Not not the traditional ones, right? I don't know. It's micro dino. It's getting <laughs> deep for a Tuesday. I can a little bit. <laughs> All right, let's start with this. The luxury clothing line, Balenciaga, is trying to get out of the hot water. They are drowning in by filing a $25 million lawsuit against the production company who put together the ad campaign that has caused a lot of controversy, and they are trying to keep the thread from unraveling even more. Here is the claim. Balenciaga hired North Six to produce the ad campaign with Nicole Kidman and model Bella Hadid. They looked like they were in a corporate environment. One of the shots included a messy desk, and that's where things got really messy. The props on the desk were supposed to be fake documents, but there was a real page from a Supreme Court case about child pornography. Balenciaga says that image has caused people to falsely associate its brand with, quote, the repulsive and deeply disturbing subject of the court decision. A lawyer for one of the people who was associated with the company said his client wasn't responsible for those items on the desk and North Six said it didn't have any input when it came to the shoot. Oh, but there's more. Luciaga is still dealing with the image in an ad of children cuddling teddy bears dressed in bondage gear. Over the weekend, Kim Kardashian finally spoke out, says she's reevaluating her relationship with the company. She is one of the ambassadors. She says she was left shaken by the disturbing images. Lissiago apologized for those ads. For the first time in over a season and a half, Deshaun Watson will be back on the football field as the expected starting quarterback for the Cleveland Browns this Sunday. Watson was suspended for 11 games this season, fined $5 million after being accused by more than two dozen women of sexual misconduct. All of the civil suits have been settled except for one. Watson was never charged with any crime after two grand juries declined to indict him. He has denied any wrongdoing. The Browns still face Watson's old team, the Houston Texans, Sunday in Houston at noon. We have told you before that this time of year, the scammers come out of the woodwork and really try to take advantage of shoppers. The IRS even sending out warnings now. They tell us now's a great time for taxpayers to zero in on protecting your sensitive information from identity thieves. The holiday season in prime pickings and your info could end up on a fraudulent tax return. The IRS says texting scams called smishing are increasing. So look out for the texts that pretend to be reputable companies. Shoppers should really be paying attention to those tech scams. And there is new research that has been published about a dinosaur that has a pretty flat head, relatively small, comparatively speaking, and lived on an island. The dinosaur has a really long name, so we're not going to even try to say it. It lived on Transylvania 70 million years ago, even outdates Dracula. That is now Western Romania, where Transylvania used to be. It walked on two legs, had a powerful tail and eight plants, but it was only about six feet long since it lived on an island that explains why it was smaller than its cousin. So there you go, a small dinosaur because of an island. It's called the vampire dino. Yeah, I guess so. Oh, that'd be good, I like that. There's a nickname there. Check out those teeth. Um, and, and oh, by the way, to change the subject, I know you guys were talking about uh, No Shave November. Yes. And yes. Mike and Justin are having this, this back oh, and forth. Yes. Yeah. So I, I solved the problem for you. What is that? Uh -huh. All the folks just send your donations to me. To David Sears. You won't Sears. have to worry well, about, of course. about call those that two battling. The it. David yeah. Sears solution. That, <laughs> perfect. All right. It works. All right. Yeah. Just saying. Good, I, good idea, David. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, David. Right. right now, 9-11, 68 degrees. And we mentioned earlier about Giving Tuesday in the 9 at 9. If you're looking for a way to give back this holiday season, we are featuring just one of the many local nonprofits you can donate to. Tiffany with us will join us after the break to explain how this local organization is transforming our community through the power of sports. Well, as we mentioned, today is Giving Tuesday, and it's a day of giving to charities and nonprofits. One local organization participating has been working to expand access to our sports community and provide healthy living for years. Tiffany Huerta shows us how San Antonio sports programs are changing the lives of children in our city. Hey, Tiffany, good morning. Hi, good morning, Mark and Stephanie. Right now we're live at JT Brackenridge Elementary School and just check it out. These kids have been playing this morning here. San Antonio Sports hosts a free after school program. These kids are part of the I Play program. They get to play soccer, volleyball, tennis, basketball, and it helps them in many different ways. This morning we have San Antonio Sports Senior Vice President Jenny Carnes and I Play After School Coach Gloria Martinez. Good morning to both of you. Jenny, let's start with this program. What does it provide students? 
Well, San Antonio Sports, our mission is to transform our community through the power of sports, specifically with community programs like I Play After School. We're in over 60 Title I elementary schools around the community, and we bring early sport development to third through fifth graders, also with a focus on mental health, character development, and nutrition. So this is a very impactful program for these kids. And this has been going on for several years. What type of impact do you see it happening in our community? Well, it introduces these young kids to sport and what that means and how it can impact their life. And not only that, just getting out and being active and living a healthier lifestyle. So hopefully that puts them on a path to live a, a, a better life. And Gloria, you have been working with these kids here for many years. Um, what type of change have you seen in the students? With the San Antonio Sports I Play program, we've seen a tremendous change in the students. Their behavior, their character itself, they have confidence in themselves. It's built confidence in a lot of them. Some of our kids have uh, dropped down on grades, but well, now their grades are picked up. Their attendance was bad, their attendance picked up. It's a carrot that we hold over them. So you want to be an I Play? You're going to have good grades, you're going to have good behavior, you're going to have here at home, at school and at home. It doesn't just happen here. So we get the families involved and they're real big supporters of our after school program. Especially, you know, with these kids, it's a little bit tougher out in our neighborhood. And having this program here at JT keeps them here after school till six o'clock, we're practicing. They go home, they're tired, they shower, they've already done homework, and they don't come to me unless they've done homework. Okay, so they've done their homework, they've got their grades up, and we're ready to go. So it's a great program to have. Amazing, and I could tell they, they have a lot of love for you and this sport. Uh, Jenny, what does it mean to get donations today? Well, it is Giving Tuesday. Um, we are supported by donations, sponsors, grants to keep these programs going in our community throughout the year. So I would uh, definitely encourage everyone to go to sanantoniosports.org and give a donation today. Keep these programs going. We're also about big events. It's Rock and Roll San Antonio Marathon Weekend. So we do a lot throughout the year, but it takes com some contributions from our community. Well, amazing. Thank you for joining us this morning. We're going to have more details and we're going to hear from the kids coming up on the noon show. We'll send it back to you. We look forward to it. Thank you, Tiffany. Outside with live cam, 68 degrees and very gray out there. We had quite a bit of fog and mist in the overnight hours. Do we see any sun today, Justin? We will. I think it'll happen pretty rapidly, too. Those clouds will clear out and then by the afternoon, the sun will be Full strength, and that'll get us up into the 80s potentially. Wow. Which uh, it's, it's not near a record, but that is well above average, and then everything changes tomorrow. So we like to call this weather whiplash type, yeah. type weather. Definitely. All right, so we'll start with the uh, visibility. And uh, you can see it's down, but it's not a huge issue. This isn't down to a quarter of a mile or anything here around San Antonio. So it's just kind of hazy or uh, that's what we'll call it. Hazy is slightly foggy out there with visibility is the way they are right now. Now, as you get down towards uh, Carrizo Springs, that is the one area where we are having some issues. Visibility down close to zero there. Uh, I suspect that these visibilities will continue to get better here over the next couple of hours. It's already quite a bit brighter outside. And as we uh, look at uh, the live cam here, 70 degrees, two point is at 67. That number is very high. With south southwesterly winds at about seven miles per hour. Our case had 12 hour forecast. Cloudy skies to about noontime, and then those clouds begin to break up, and then the sun pops out, and that's where we get those temperatures to warm up pretty significantly. 80 degrees by 3 or 4 o'clock and then 78 by 5 p.m. But as we get into tonight, temperatures drift down into the 60s. And then once we get our front through, then we fall down, tumble down into the 40s by tomorrow morning. Here's the uh, satellite picture, and you can see the clouds are, are there, but uh, trying to break up already. So that's why I think by noontime, we probably are going to start to get some glimpses of sun. Uh, the big picture here, a lot of moisture being pulled north out ahead of a frontal boundary, which right behind the front, there's quite a bit of snow. And then you see the rain here across Arkansas. So what's going to happen today? This cold air is going to clash with this humid air, and we're going to get a pretty significant severe weather situation, not here, but across the southeast. So this is the convective outlook today, or the severe weather risk, as we call it. And around Jackson, Mississippi, parts of Mississippi and Louisiana, on a scale of one to five, it's going to be about a four. So there could be a tornado outbreak here today, unfortunately, across parts of Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama. Again, not here in Texas. We miss out on the bulk of the energy. So things are quiet here. And in fact, I think this front passes through without any rain. So here's a look at our forecast. By noontime, clouds beginning to break up. The sun is out. And by two o'clock, I think we're probably looking at mostly sunny skies. 
by 4 o'clock with those mostly sunny skies in place. Temperatures make their way up to around 80 here in town. 75 Fair Oaks Ranch, 82 Elmendorf, 81 down there in Pearsall. And then as uh, we get into tonight, here comes our front. I think it moves through sometime around 2, 3 a.m. and then pushes south pretty quickly. It turns windy behind the front, and then we start to get some of that colder air filtering in. And by tomorrow morning, temperatures are down in the mid 40s. So 47 here in town to start your Wednesday, but there could be some 30s in places like Kerrville by tomorrow morning. 39. What a change from what we're seeing this morning. And on top of that, this is the forecast wind gust at 7 a.m. tomorrow morning, gusting to 36 here in town. I think we'll see gusts pretty consistently around 35 miles per hour. So you take that 47, add some gusty north winds. It's going to feel quite a bit colder. I think we could see wind chills in the 30s tomorrow. So jacket weather for sure. The extended forecast about 20 degrees cooler for a high on your Wednesday, 60 the high. And then on Thursday, clouds roll in, so that kind of locks in the cold. 55 on Thursday. We start off with some fog and drizzle as these temperatures try to moderate a little bit Friday. And right now, the weekend looks mostly cloudy with just a small chance of rain Saturday. We will have to watch for a front, though. Tries to get close to the area on Sunday if it were to move through. And we're talking a matter of, you know, several miles here, a couple hundred miles, uh, then it could be quite a bit colder, but right now we're going to go with 70s over the weekend. Well, we're ready for anything. I mean, you've got a beard that would handle the polar vortex at this point. <laughs> well, it's true. I'm ready for it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yes. You, you, all you need is dogs to mush. You know what I mean? Well, you're hoping for the colder true. weather at yeah. this point. Uh, well, no, I no. Still. OK, no, good. I'm, I'm still good with the warmth. Yeah. yeah, even even with the beard. I know I wanted the cold, but then when it was here, I was like, eh, maybe it wasn't so bad <laughs> the other way around. Yeah. Same, same. <laughs> yeah. Right now, 922, 68 degrees. And when we come back, we're going to have an update on our progress getting donations for No Shave November. It's been an active morning. <laughs> Stephen, you having fun yet? Oh, it's been a fun morning uh, here on GMSA, and it's going to be even more fun when we start talking about these numbers. Yeah, it's yes. been interesting all morning. Wow, we are the home stretch here. Well, yeah, we are. Uh, we're going to get a look at this updated list. And again, uh, just don't include me in this. I'm top six. Look at those top five guys. No, it's an awesome Big job. shout out to those top five guys and the fundraising efforts. You know, we really are doing phenomenal. We've exceeded our goal. Our goal now is to continue raising a lot of money. So, uh, Justin, I mean, uh, you and Mike have been neck and neck. Yes. Now, yeah, you guys, but, uh, uh, full disclosure, can... they sit next to each other in the mm -hmm. newsroom. Yeah, we talk a lot of trash. And it's been a tense <laughs> standoff. Uh, yeah, so, so we at KSAT fine. will keep you posted on this yeah. tense standoff mm -hmm. happening in our newsroom. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I just kind of stared down this morning, had my headphones in. I just. You know. Did you guys give each other side eye? A little bit. No. A little bit. It's, no, no I love Mike. Mike's doing a great <laughs> job. See, We're, but, uh, you know, yeah, yeah, we've been doing great. Yeah, and, I love it. Uh, yeah, over 20,000 raised so far. Yeah. Still time to donate. We had our QR code that just popped up, uh, as you saw it on the screen. But, uh, you know, we've had a wonderful time growing out the facial hair for a fantastic cause. Cancer is universal. And. We've been seeing the impact with so many people and what this means to our community. So just thank you for donating to these wonderful nonprofits. They're really going to benefit from this. And the shave off happens Thursday, Thursday. Thursday. on this newscast. It oh, does. There you go. It'll look video. somewhat similar to this. Yeah, last oh, year's shave off. I hope we have a smile off. for David Sears. I know, right? <laughs> yes. so. Oh, get rid of that mustache. Good Lord. <laughs> Uh, yeah, wow. but, yeah, this is a fun time for the guys and, you know, and we're excited about it. So we're going to have a full live shot on GMSA at 9 on Thursday, December yes. 1st. So, uh, you know, I'll be there. Justin uh, plans to be there. I think so, so yeah. yeah we, we hope to have a, a good turnout uh, again. And I think it's worth bringing up again. Somebody mentioned this morning, we heard you guys say you're number one in the nation by a long shot. Who yes. are, else are you competing against? And a lot of them are sheriff's departments in states like New Jersey and Virginia. And I right. think there's a couple others on there, Pennsylvania, Florida. But it's a lot of law enforcement agencies around the country. Yes, and you know, and we thank them for the work that they're doing. Absolutely. It's always great to be on top. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. well, thanks to our yes, team co-captains this year yes, for doing a great awesome job. job. We awesome. have a, 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 just over one more day to go. So yeah. we're through tomorrow. Through Let's tomorrow. keep those donations going yeah. How about yep. through Thursday. Yeah. Let's keep it going. Let's oh. keep it growing. Let's keep, keep it keep growing. Keep it growing. That's ah, right. I love it. <laughs> Very yes. nice. Thanks, guys. What did you say, by a whisker? It was by a you, you and Mike, by a whisker. By several whiskers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is that the biggest, uh, the thickest beard you've ever grown in your life? I mean, uh, it may be. Yeah. You know. Oh, give us a look. Yeah. Look, look if they're even zooming in. Oh. <laughs>
<laughs> my goodness. Now, if, if, people, oh my if people don't donate now, I mean, uh, I don't know. <laughs> people wow. in some of our international markets are now going to be chiming in. That was amazing. 928.69 degrees. <laughs> Wow. There's a lot more ahead on GMSA at 9, including the tensions boiling over with the U.S. and Iran World Cup game today, what was said during a press conference and what is behind the strain between the two countries. That's right. And while many families celebrate the holidays together, many families in Uvalde are coping with their first season without their loved ones. What Warren organization is doing to bring some joy during this dark year? And welcome back. It is 932. Thanksgiving marked six months since the Robb Elementary School shooting in New Valley and Christmas Eve will mark seven months. It, of course, is a somber holiday season for the families of the victims. As KSAT's Lee Waldman shows us, people across the country are finding ways they can try to bring some joy during this time of darkness. It's a Christmas tradition, writing letters to Santa for toys and clothes. But for kids in Uvalde who survived the Romb Elementary shooting, they're asking for more. Jaden Canizales wants cameras around his home so he can feel safe. It's funny because a lot of them are asking for things with their family, which I think is so sweet. Tara Wysik with advocacy group Luna Liaisons is working to help Santa make the Christmas wishes of the ROM survivors and their siblings come true. Her organization put together this wish list for Uvalde after talking to the 11 survivors from rooms 111 and 112. You can see the moments of happiness that come through, and that's sort of what we're trying to get is maybe more of these moments. Wysik is offering this help all the way in Washington, D.C., where she met families of the victims in June. Kindness knows no geographical bounds. 16-year-old Sammy McGee from Kansas is collecting toys for her Girl Scout Gold Award project. Uh, my ultimate goal is to just put some smiles on some children's faces because I know after what they saw, they'll never be the same again. So far, McGee has collected over 200 toys from people across the country. Her goal is to double that and spread as much joy as she can. I am so thankful just every trip to the post office. It was just so emotional knowing that people are wanting to help my project to help these kids. We'll have links to both McGee's Amazon wish list and Luna Liaison's wish list on our website, ksat.com, if you'd like to help make some of these Christmas wishes come true. Lee Waldman, KSAT 12 News. Well, we've been talking a lot about giving, and there's another nonprofit that could use our help. Senior Veterans Incorporated is a national nonprofit, and they're involved with laying wreaths on graves at Fort Sam Houston National Cemetery for Christmas. But this year, they are short on donations. Organizers say about 80% of graves will not get a wreath because they don't have enough in donations. Tomorrow is the last day that people can donate a $15 remem remembrance wreath, and we have information on how you can donate on our website at kset.com. Let's make it happen, San Antonio. Outside with live cam on your Tuesday, we are getting oh so close to jumping right into the month of December, Justin. Man, it is uh, it is almost here, and November's been a pretty good month for us rain-wise. We got a little bit this morning, and by a little bit, I mean like a hundredth of an inch with some drizzle and some fog. That is starting to lift. Let's look at the visible satellite picture. You get a, a good idea of what we have going on. A lot of cloud cover, at least at the moment. These clouds begin to break up here in the next couple of hours. Eventually, we'll get some sun this afternoon, and that means it'll be a pretty warm day. Already fairly warm, 70 degrees at the airport, 67 in Kerrville, 67 up in Frederick, one of the places that is seeing some clearing skies already. Uh, around San Antonio, 70 down in Stinson. It is 73 Gonzalez and 70 out in Seguin. Our case at 12 hour forecast, mostly cloudy noontime, but we will see some partly cloudy and mostly sunny skies later today. Uh, with the sun, temperatures make their way up to around 80. That does not last because a cold front comes through later tonight and into tomorrow morning. Here's a look at the timing of that frontal boundary. We think it's moving through the hill country around midnight, San Antonio around 3 a.m. or so, and by 6 a.m. is moving through our southeastern counties. Very small chance for a shower, generally east of San Antonio. Gusty winds will be a big story with this front, and there could even be some wind chills tomorrow morning. So a big change for us coming up on Wednesday. More on that and our next rain chance coming up in just a few minutes, guys.
Now to the World Cup and today's win or go home game for the U.S. men's national team. They are playing Iran for the first time in 24 years. And as ABC's Rihanna Nally reports, the tension has been building for days and finally spilled out into the open. Today's politically charged match between the U.S. and Iran grew even more contentious at the pregame news conference when a reporter for Iranian state TV turned to Tyler Adams, the captain of Team USA, and corrected Adams on how to say Iran. Our country is named Iran, not Iran. Please, once and for all, let's get this clear. The Iranian reporter then asked Adams about the discrimination against black people in the U.S. Are you okay to be representing the U.S.? Meanwhile, there's so much discrimination happening against black people in America. My apologies on uh, the mispronunciation of your country. Um, you know, there's discrimination uh, everywhere you go. Um, you know, one thing that I've learned, especially from living abroad in the past years and uh, having to fit in in different cultures and, and kind of assimilate into different cultures, um, is that in the U.S. we're, we're continuing to make progress uh, every single day. It's a process. I think as, as long as you see progress, uh, that's the most important thing. Back in Iran, anti-government protests have been spreading for weeks. The unrest stemming from the in-custody death of a woman for not wearing her headscarf properly has spilled into the World Cup stage, with spectators booing Iran's national anthem. One protester even ran onto the field wearing a Respect for Woman shirt. Meanwhile, Iranian state media has called for the U.S. team to be kicked out of the tournament after the U.S. Soccer Federation removed the Islamic Republic emblem from Iran's flag in this social media post, a move to show support for protesters in Iran. Rihanna Ali, ABC News, New York. Okay, today's match is a must win for the U.S. Even a tie will result in the USA's elimination from the World Cup tournament. They tied in the previous two games against Wales and England. Uh, actually, that was a tie. Yes. Uh, England was scoreless. Right. Scoreless. All right, today's match set for 1 o'clock. That airs live on Fox. 938, 69 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. The Tuesday after Thanksgiving is also becoming known as Travel Tuesday, and that's because of the great deals that you can score. When we come back, we will tell you specifically which flights and hotels to look for. Uh, real quick, personally, I want to thank my mom and dad for making No Shave November Aww. a donation. You waited till the very uh, last couple of days, but thank you, mom and dad. Love you guys. Aww. All right, if you have the urge to travel, there's still time to squeeze in a quick getaway before the holidays. Today is being called Travel Tuesday because of all the good deals available on flights and hotel stays. ABC's Will Gans tells us where to save the most money. Tis the season to travel. Take it, Russ. But before you head out on your own Christmas vacation, here's how to wrap up some serious deals on this Travel Tuesday. Everyone is traveling again. So Travel Tuesday seems like it's back with a vengeance. In fact, flight and hotel data proves travel providers tend to drop 50% more deals on Travel Tuesday than on the average day. The best way to save money on Travel Tuesday is to keep your dates flexible because you're going to have blackout dates. These airlines are, these airlines, these hotels are putting dates on sale for a reason. Some specific deals to be on the lookout for. Dallas to Las Vegas, airfare for some departure dates under $100, and it will be an additional $35 off on Travel Deal Tuesday. Haley Berg from Travel App Hopper says the best deals are for international bucket list flights. Airfare from New York City to Rome is as low as $400 for some travel dates. On Travel Deal Tuesday, it'll be additional $100 off. Another trending travel spot this year. People are really excited about the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico uh, with the huge success of the new, the latest Black Panther movie, Wakanda Forever. But if you're staying stateside, how about hotels? All Hilton properties in Vegas are offering up to 30% off. Marriott Bonvoy members can save up to 20% off of room rates at any of the participating hotels. And Hyatt telling us it's also offering up to 20% off at nearly 1,000 different hotels if you book by Wednesday. No matter where you book on Travel Tuesday, take advantage of those extra discounts by setting alerts so you know exactly when fares drop, and then compare prices across websites. Don't be afraid to download apps like Skyscan or Travelocity, Priceline, Booking for additional app-only discounts. There's some hidden ones in there.
Will Gans, ABC News, New York. Yeah, take advantage for sure. A couple of other little tips. Mm -hmm. If you use your smartphone, whoops, smartphone versus like a laptop or a desktop computer, uh -huh. you can sometimes get better deals. That's Because they true. want more user activity here, right? Right. Uh -huh. um, and also, uh, if you can, maybe book directly with the airlines. They also have deals too. But I've done some shopping on Expedia. Last couple of days, they've had some amazing deals, but a lot of the deals right now are for travel in the next 30 to 60 days ah. yeah, or my, so. My in-laws got a good deal over the weekend, right. even, even before today. I, I forgot about that. I mean, because you think about holiday shopping, like other stuff, and I right. forgot about like the you whole travel you got to be really thing. quick. You do yes. have, to, you have to jump on it very quick. Like, if you're yeah. planning a big vacation next summer or next fall, it's way too early, and the airfares are horrible right now. So if you can do something sooner than later, even better for everybody. It's like buying Taylor Swift tickets. Right. Ooh, I don't know if it's that bad. That was almost the apocalypse for some of you. It was, was intense. Joke. Yeah, I mean, yeah you it were, was. you're still in line, right? <laughs> yes. yes, I am. No, I'm Just not. waiting. Uh. <laughs> oh, Justin, Ooh. our little Swifty. Mm. <laughs> Anyway, the new album, it's not, it's not bad. Uh, anyway, uh, let's take a look at the, some of the visibility here around uh, Bear County. It's uh, it's getting better slowly, but surely we had some fog for much of the night, some drizzle too. Uh, but the real issue has been down there around Carrizo Springs, but even that is starting to improve. We're seeing visibility come up up to a quarter of a mile improvement from the last time we talked to you. And I think fog is uh, really not going to be an issue for much longer as we go outside. Uh, it just looks a little brighter out there. The, the clouds are trying to lift some 70 across the board. Southerly winds anywhere from 5 to 10. And as we look at the satellite picture here, still fairly thick cloud cover over San Antonio, but it's starting to break up some out west. It's certainly breaking up across the hill country. And I think you'll see that trend even here around San Antonio as we head towards the lunch hour. The sun's starting to pop out and then you'll get uh, some warmer temperatures already up to 74 in Gonzales, 70 at the airport, 72 Pleasanton, 69 right now in Hondo, and a lot of 70s here in Bear County right now. And it's, it's humid out there. It feels kind of sticky. KSAT 12 hour forecast by noontime, mostly cloudy, 75. We are forecasting to get up into the low 80s, which is well above average today. And then uh, mostly clear tonight, uh, 65 at nine o'clock. But keep in mind, our frontal boundary arrives pre dawn Wednesday. And that drops uh, temperatures, drops dew points too. This is the dew point trend. So yeah, fairly muggy today, and then we just fall off a ledge. Uh, dew points drop into the 30s by Wednesday. They do recover pretty quickly. By Friday, we're right back in the 60s, and the weekend promises to be fairly humid. Uh, so it's just a couple days here where we get some dry air from this front. There again is a look at the satellite picture, and as we zoom out, Good swath of moisture here stretching from San Antonio up to Memphis. And then you've got our frontal boundary here behind it. Some snow, some good snow for places like Omaha. This front progresses south and east. This is the same front that moves through our neck of the woods tonight, but it does not really produce any rain for us. All the energy is going to be swept east and it's this area, Memphis to Lake Charles down to New Orleans, over to Birmingham and Montgomery, where there's going to be a pretty significant outbreak of severe weather today. There could be tornadoes. On a scale of one to five, we're talking about a four here. So this is this is pretty significant, and folks there are going to be dealing with severe weather. Uh, looks like uh, during the afternoon. For us, we see those clouds break up some by midday. Still mostly cloudy, but I think by two o'clock the sun is out and uh, temperatures warm as a result. We mentioned 80 here in San Antonio. A lot of places, especially south of San Antonio, will get into the 80s, probably some mid 70s up around Bernie and Kerrville. And then as we head into tonight. Still pretty quiet. It's not until about two or three o'clock that our front comes through. Gusty winds kick up behind that and then it turns windy for Wednesday morning and it will be quite a bit chillier. This is the forecast at 7 a.m. tomorrow. 46 San Marcos, 45 Canyon Lake, 48 Elmendorf, 47 here in town and 50 in Pleasanton. But with a gusty north wind and this is the forecast wind gust gusting to 36. It's going to feel a little bit chillier than that. Wind chill values may drop into the 30s. So jackets for sure tomorrow as the kids head off to school. 55 on Thursday, clouds move in. It'll be cooler with cloud cover in place, but uh, things do moderate a little bit as we head into the weekend. Right now we're forecasting 70s, just a small chance for showers, some fog and drizzle perhaps Friday and Saturday morning. Nothing too significant here, and we'll probably get a pretty good front. It looks like sometime next week.
That'll be good when we get that front because it's going to be a little humid, I guess, over the weekend. It is. This is that time of year, though, where we, we really do ride the roller coaster because you get the fronts and it goes back and forth and you just got to be prepared for a little bit of everything. Yeah, we'll just keep all our wardrobe out. Exactly. Thanks, Justin. Yep. By the way, if you Google Ryan Reynolds with a beard, Aw. <laughs> this guy. Oh, come on. Yes. 949, 70 degrees. An inspiring tale of two sisters who went from war-torn Syria to the Olympics is now on Netflix. We're going to have a preview of the movie after the break. 953, the United Nations says about 100 million people worldwide have been forcibly displaced. A new movie is based on the remarkable true story of two refugees who survived a harrowing journey. Seen as David Daniel gives us a look at the Netflix movie, The Swimmers. One day, I want to swim in the Olympics. But that seemed very far away for Syrian sisters Yisra and Sarah Mardini when war tore their country apart. The Swimmers dramatizes how they became refugees and literally had to swim for their lives. you both did in the scene. She got in burst. She's a superhero. Real life sisters Manal and Natalie Issa play the Mardinis with Mattia Schweighoffer as a swim coach. I heard you both had to escape a war. We're forming an Olympic refugee team for real. We have a lot of work to do. You should do it. There's so much more than an Olympian. Ready? You know, I grew up in Egypt and it's not often you see young, modern, liberal Arab women represented on, on our screens. And that was so refreshing to me and I wanted to celebrate that. Yusra Mardini says she trusted director Sally El Hosseini with telling her story. She also explained that this is not only your story, this is a story of millions of other refugees and we want to show that as well. And at that point I really trusted her with the process. That process included Yisra doing some of the swimming seen in the film. I doubled for myself, <laughs> that was weird, and I, uh, they called me on set Yisra number two and I was like, no, no, I'm the original one. <laughs> Um, it was awful being number two on the call sheet, it huh? It was, <laughs> and I was like, you know, just the double, you know. Swim for me. For everyone who died trying to find a new life. Swim for all of us. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. And coming up tomorrow on GMSA at 9, Science with Sarah is back. So Sarah Spivey and her assistant, David Sears, will be out at the Lighthouse Charter School on the city's west side doing a neat experiment with a fourth grade class there. So make sure to tune in for that tomorrow on GMSA at 9. I love that picture. Me too. It makes me laugh every time. <laughs> uh, 70 degrees right now. We'll be up around 80 today. The clouds will clear out some. Cold front tonight, though, and so be prepared tomorrow morning for a much chillier start. Windy, cool, and we only make it up to about 60 tomorrow. All right, before we go, a Texas family ripped apart 50 years ago, reunited by fate. Jeffrey Highsmith took a 23andMe test, and his son reached out to the woman on their list, and together they realized she was the daughter kidnapped from Highsmith and his then wife by a babysitter in 1971. Wow, this past week, Melissa Highsmith reunited with her birth parents. Jeffrey says he cried like a baby, and Melissa says she feels like she's dreaming. Wow. All because of one of those DNA tests. Yeah. It's incredible. It truly is. She wound up on a list of three names that they did not recognize, wound up being relatives. Wow, quite a story. Yep. Thanks for joining us today. And thank you for your donations. See you tomorrow. Justin, you're still on a hot streak. <laughs>